Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Buddhang dhammang sanghang namasami Permission from Venerable Tupton Chodron and from the monastic community here. Um, so very happy to be here. Um, this is my first time coming to the community, first time visiting the monastery. Uh, I met Venerable Tupton Chodron, um, I think, 16 years ago, uh, perhaps 15, at the Buddhist monastic gathering at City of 10,000 Buddhas. And uh, yeah, I got some really good advice from you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had some. Yeah, yeah, I had some very confused questions about, uh, you know, how to coming into this rather strict uh, tradition of forest monastic Buddhism and having this idea of Mahakasapa, like the most ascetic, foremost monk in asceticism, just playing, you know, so large in my mind, but having no idea to ha how to actually live that with, with metta and just having met you so briefly, uh, could just feel the metta emanating off of you. And, um, <laughs> yes, that's, that's what it was. That's, that's how I was seeing it. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I asked you about that. Like, how does one balance, uh, being strict with, with metta and having loving kindness and, uh, how does one take Mahakasapa as one's ideal? And you said, actually, I like Venerable Ananda. <laughs> and uh, somehow I, I hadn't actually just realized that one could have different monastic ideals. And uh, I think that really did soften a lot of my monastic practice, which um, I think is really useful for, has been useful for the longevity of my monastic life so far. Um, and may it keep going. Um, so... Yeah, something which people have probably heard um, is that, you know, they say, I'm not sure if it was Ajahn Amaro or who said it first, but that in Tibetan Buddhism, you've got 10,000 or 100,000 prostrations. And in Thai forest Buddhism, we've got 100,000 frustrations. Uh, but, but honestly, I mean, you think about, I can't imagine anybody living in a monastery and not having 100,000 uh, frustrations. So... Um, but just, just this morning was thinking about that. I mean, I, I learned very inspired by the Ngundro practices, which specifically taught by yourself, Venerable, um, listened to basically in the Theravada, the Thai forest tradition, we have what's called the first five years of Nisaya or living independence on your teacher. And that's kind of seen as like the, uh, almost the elementary school you know, of um, Theravada Buddhism and really hearing about these Ngondro preliminary practices and saying, that's really inspiring. What, what is Theravada Ngondro? What is Thai forest Ngondro practices? And really, yeah, and we've got some things which are the preliminaries of the practice. You know, we sew our own robes, you know, first with a, a sewing machine and oftentimes more and more these days just by hand. So hand sewing a set a triple robe, which takes a lot of time. I'm not sure I didn't count the, the stitches, but maybe, maybe 100,000, or at least <laughs> tens of thousands. Um, we've got memorization, you know, recitations, uh, memorizing the Padimokha in, in Pali, which is a common thing. Oftentimes, many of us memorize the Dhammapada. Um, so these are not small things, but it's like not enough for like a young 20-year-old dude <laughs> or dudette, probably, you know, it's like very gung-ho, a lot of energy and a lot of comparisons, you know, a lot of comparison and, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, comparative or, yeah, contemplative comparatism, you know, is what you get big into in your first years in robes and just reading about the Ngontro practices and then listening to your talks, Venerable, um, watching YouTube videos. I learned how to do the full Tibetan style prostration from it's probably a minute and a half, uh, two minute and a half long uh, videos from yourself, and then 
yeah, I had basically done, I checked off all the boxes of you know, Theravada Ngondro practices. Okay, memorize the Padi Mocha, memorize this, memorize that, did this, did that, and I'm like, okay, I'm still not enlightened, still not there. <laughs> okay, let's go to the Tibetan Ngondro practices and got permission, and really, honestly, my meditation not going so well. We've got three months of meditation where we're all sitting together for eight, nine hours a day. And honestly, I, this is my fifth year in robes. Uh, I just came to a place where I couldn't do that. I'm looking forward or looking at the upcoming, this is in December, it starts from January, looking to three months of just sitting for eight hours a day. My mind just balked, could not get into it that year and asked Lumpur Pasano, my teacher, preceptor, could I do, rather than doing eight hours of meditation, could I do uh, bowing for the next three months? Did the math, 1,111 <laughs> bows every day for 90 days, you get 100,000. So took on that practice and basically from your short videos, just how, it, how these things compound over time, uh, learned it in three minutes how to, how to bow and uh, obviously didn't perfect it, but did do it 100,000 times. And uh, um, yeah, I love these, these metrics, this idea of like quantified self or like, uh, what do you call it? Uh, maybe auto analytics. So you're basically saying how much am I practicing by counting these different things. And I love it. That's what's great about the Ngontro, about these different things. But really it doesn't go that far. You do 100,000 of these things or tens of thousands and I'm still not enlightened. And honestly, that's where the, the frustrations come in. And it's one of the paradoxes of the Theravada. You know, on reading one of your books this morning, uh, Venerable, and it is accurate to say that the Theravada vehicle is seeking enlightenment for the self. You know, I, may I, I'm working for my own Nibbana. And I do think that a personal Nibbana does have huge implications for the world. Um, but it is self-based. And there is this self that's <laughs> constantly complicating things and, and frustrating everything. And it's, uh, you know, humility, kind of the, um, the counterpoint, the solution, the, the tonic, the uh, fix for self, you know, is this humility, but you can't, you can't um, really quantify humility. You know, as soon as you do, you fail. It's like just the whole prospect fails. You can't do 100,000 humilities, um, really. Um, so just constantly working with this, uh, this, this frustration of, of self, and uh, I'm so looking forward to, to being here, meeting the community, and uh, learning from the community, learning about emptiness, learning about the tantric vehicle. Right now I'm studying at Dharma Realm Buddhist University um, and have been learning a lot about the Mahayana. That has been amazing for me. Came in with a lot of Theravada conceit, honestly. And just my first Buddhist class, Buddhist Classics 101, and reading the Mahaprajnaparamita Sutra Okay, Theravada, we've got, there is suffering, there's a cause of suffering, there's a cessation of suffering, there's a way leading to cessation of suffering. Mahaprajnaparamita, there is no suffering, there's no cause of suffering, <laughs> there's no cessation of suffering, there's no way, there's no way you can do it. And it was so frustrating. <laughs> and I'm the only like Theravada guy in this class. Everybody's like Mahayana, just loving it, you know, like, it's so true, it's so true, and I'm like, it's not, it, it's hard. How do I get my mind around that? And just, that's been the best lesson, actually, in the university so far, is just coming up with my own, it feels very selfie, you know, when, I, when I'm frustrated with all of the students in my class and with these beautiful suttas and uh, just not being able to get my mind around the beauty of it, not being able to get my heart around the, the beauty of these truths, and I really hope that the next couple of days. It's not, it's not long enough, um, but really very much look forward to meeting every one of the, the venerables here and uh, learning a lot because there's so much to learn from all these other vehicles. Um, so uh, maybe just in the uh, talk there and thank you so much for having.
having both of us. In terms of your wish to do 100,000 100, bowing, yeah, uh, one lama said it gives you 999,999 ,999 opportunities to do one with sincerity. <laughs> Maybe while I'm here, I can get that one. So, <laughs> so that's very good for cultivating yeah. humility. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's it's also, uh, you know, a ninety nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine opportunities to be widely distracted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was good at that. Good yeah. At that. yeah. <laughs>